Hello, this is Joe, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering the ZWO electronic autofocuser and its installation on an Edge HD, and also the setup inside of Nina. So here's what your telescope should look like when you first get it. You'll have the focusing knob and it's a rubber knob um, and it just pulls off. But real quick before we get started, I want to mention that it's very important that you leave the you leave these loose. These are the, the screws that um, will lock your mirror for you um, so that you don't get mirror flop. And if you're not going to use um, an electronic autofocuser, then you would tighten these up and you wouldn't have to worry about mirror flop. But because we are going to be using the EAF, we do need to make sure that these are loose. Uh, because the, the mirror is actually moving when you, when you tighten this, or when you move the focuser. And so you can't have these tight, otherwise you can damage the mirror. So before we get started on um, taking apart and putting on the EAF, um, we could take a look at the EAF. This is the EAF here, and I do have this bracket is an extra piece that, that you have to order. And I have actually screwed it on already um, to the EAF motor. Now this other piece right here, um, I've taken that off. It goes on to the, the telescope like this. And when it comes, it actually comes connected right here. On, on this very end piece. And what we need to do is move it to the third one from the end, right here. Um, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is take off the, the rubber piece that goes on top of the towel, that goes over the focuser. There we go. Ooh, that was on there. The next thing we wanna do is remove the screws on the ring, the locking, the orange locking ring. And once you do this, your telescope focuser on the edge eight is going to want to start to, to come out. All right. We're going to reuse the orange locking ring to keep the telescope focuser in. You can see it's already starting to push out. I'm doing this on my mount while it's still on there. Uh, if you were doing this, maybe, um, on a flat surface, you could, gravity wouldn't be working against you so much, but you could see that the focuser is, has slid out. Now, you're not gonna reuse the black screws, so you could put those to the side. The easiest way I found so far is to line up these plates together and then put one of the screws that come with the, that come with the adapter on because then you're gonna you're gonna line this up and you can you just need to get one started. You'll need to hold this as you and push in on the focuser as you go. And we just we don't want to tighten this all the way up yet, but we want to get it en enough of a bite so that it, it keeps everything in place. And then we'll grab the other two screws and get them in. The right holes. I'm not tightening these all the way. I'm just going a little bit at a time on each one so that this is in the center. The focuser could drift. It shouldn't with this orange plate, but I want to make sure that it stays in the center. So I'm just going to tighten these up a little at a time, all the way around. Okay, so once you have the plate on and the orange locking ring is also still on, I don't know if you can see that orange locking ring right here, and then the plate, and it should look like this. Okay, so next we're going to put on our sleeve that goes over the focuser, our adapter sleeve. 
I think that's what it's called. Um, I kind of make up my own words, so don't quote what I'm calling these things to other people because it's probably not correct, but it doesn't matter to me. I've got a name for everything. So now we have our motor and with our motor, I've already got the adapter plate on it. We're going to slide our electronic focuser now into, into the sleeve. And we're going to just leave it loose in there and hold it while we connect our bolts. Okay, so you could see that this is off. Um, there's some contortion here and this is almost touching where this has a big wide gap. So if we leave it like this, it will end up binding. So the way to adjust that is to take the screws that are on the, the electronic focuser. Um, we're going to loosen them up real quick, just a little bit. And then we'll move the focuser until there's no more contortion. And then we'll very lightly tighten those back up. Okay. Now these are tight. This looks even all the way. I don't see any contortion, any bending one way or the other. And now we'll tighten up our grub screws. for the EAF. We'll just lightly tighten each side, making sure that everything's still straight and even. Here's what we, we have when we're finished. And we'll just plug this back in. And we're all set for tonight. Here we are in the release version of Nina, and we're on the autofocuser equipment page. And basically, you'll have a drop down menu. It should actually recognize your focuser. If not, you can choose it from here. And you'll want to connect for now. We'll connect the focuser, and then we're going to go to options. And we're going to go down to focuser and we're going to make the step size 100. If you've got a refractor with the Crayford style focuser, um, you'll have much less steps in, in to autofocus with. And so I would set it to 30. But because we're using an SCT, uh, specifically the Edge 8, it's got many steps. And so I want to set it, some, uh, set it a, little, a lot higher. So we're going to set this to 100 and then you'll go to your um, your focuser tab and you'll notice that the small arrow will give you half the autofocus step size, so 50, since we have it set to 100. And the double arrow will give you five times the autofocus step size, so that's 500. And what you want to do is you want to move, and I usually... Um, start with the small ones and because I've got clouds I'm unable to actually take an image but I'll put an image up on the screen to simulate what you would do so the first thing that you'd want to do is you'd want to take an image so you, you know you can come over to your image tab and you can click I don't have the camera connected at the moment but it you would take maybe a two to five second luminance exposure You'll get an image on the screen. Whether it's in focus or not doesn't really matter. What you want to do is you want to pay attention to the stars that are there. And then you go back to the, your focuser and you want to move the focuser um, by 50. And then you'll go back to your image again and you'll take another exposure. If you've noticed that the stars have moved, uh, that they've changed either in focus or out of focus in any way, then you know that you're good there at 50. But most likely, 
that's not going to be the case, especially with this many steps in your focuser. And so you'll want to click this again. And you'll keep moving this just in one direction. It doesn't really matter. And taking an exposure and then moving it again, taking the exposure while looking to see if you've noticed any stars change. As soon as you notice that a star changes, you'll want to count how many times you've clicked this button. So in my case, um, we're going to go back to options and focuser. In my case, with an autofocus step size of 100, um, I know that my backlash is um, it's between two and 300. So I would have to, and, and at half of this, I would have to click it four to five times, maybe six total, before I'd start to see a change in the star movement. So in order to change this, we need to go back to our equipment, back to autofocuser, and disconnect the autofocuser. Then go back in the options and in the focuser again, and you'll notice this is no longer grayed out. This can be a little tricky if it's the first time you've ever done it. And you want to change this to overshoot. And you also want to change this to whatever it was that you've counted up how many steps were, were in your backlash. Now, with this overshoot method, you can go much over the steps that you counted. And in my case, I think I was about 240, maybe 250. So I, what I did was I set this to 300. And it's been working fantastic. I also noticed um, that my auto focus step size is best kept at 200 for, for good curves. So I don't know if everybody's would be the same, if every Edge HD is going to be exactly the same as mine with the EAF. I, I'm guessing not, but this these settings right here might be a great place to start with an with a autofocus step size of 200 and a backlash in and out of 300 with the compensation method on overshoot. Now, Quiv the Lazy Geek has an excellent video tutorial on how to do this. Um, this is what I followed to do mine. What I normally would do is I would, I've normally had Crayford style focusers and I would do basically what I'm showing you to do, except I would just wait and as soon as I saw the knob move on the focuser, I would know what my backlash was and I would just set that at you know 10 or 20 higher than that on, on my backlash. Now, you only need to set this on the in or the out. I've always set mine on the in. Um, I, I've never actually touched the out. I've always left it zero. Maybe you can have it in both. I don't know, but this has always worked for me, so that's what I'm going to show you in my video. Um, also, just... Uh, to make note, when I'm using my Z81 refractor, I usually have this set to just trend lines. And when I'm using my SCT, I have this set to trends and hyperbolic. Um, it, I just get a much better focus curve and everything seems to work much better on the SCT when I have this set to trends and hyperbolic. So that's it. It's, it's a, Pretty simple, but there's a, a couple gotchas, and that's why I wanted to show this. Really, it's just that you cannot make changes here in this area with your autofocuser connected. And, and I think that's going to throw a lot of people. And, and once you've made your um, changes here, and you, you need to go test, so you need to go back to your equipment, you need to go back to focuser and reconnect it, and then start moving and taking images again uh, with your focuser. I hope you found this information useful. If so, please smash that like button. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them and we'll see you in the next video.